We're in North Logan tonight for the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel as the Green Canyon Wolves play host to the Mountain Crest Mustangs. Both of these teams have really been powered by their defenses so far this season. Green Canyon 4-1, the Mustangs with only one win. But Coach Greg Ander tells me, hey, he's a little bit concerned about Mountain Crest. They've shown signs. They can get that ball running. They can really stretch out a possession and get into the end zone. On the flip side, they've had a little bit of trouble scoring as a Green Canyon, and he's hoping to get that offense going a little bit better tonight against the Mustangs. Four and one with Green Canyon, but they had that big loss last week to Ridgeline. They're hoping to get that nasty taste out of their mouth tonight against the Mountain Crest Mustangs. We're going to see which one of the offenses wakes up tonight on the Game of the Week. his team got off to a really good start then the wheels kind of came off last week against Ridgeline now Ridgeline's a very good team but coach Ander shared with me what's going on in the psyche of his of his uh, players you know they had a player on this team who who died a few weeks ago it was a, a, a tragedy for a young man like that to for his life to end and they all had to deal with that the funeral and everything else he said as a team as people, we were physically and just emotionally exhausted, and he felt like that played into some of what went on against Ridgeline. He said, we need to really, we, f we need to find the joy in playing again, get that joy back in playing with these kids, and so hopefully they can do that soon. They're winning with tough defense. He said, our offense is a work in progress. We're looking for more explosives, more explosive plays, more big plays, because the games they are winning, they're winning by one, two, three points. He said, hey, if we, if we can win a game by four points, we're going to feel like that's a blowout the way things are going. But a win is a win, whether by one or by 20. And, yeah, he's a little bit worried about Mountain Crest. Even though they've had their struggles, they're showing some signs of life. And he's saying, hey, whichever defense tonight can really stand up and whichever offense can maybe do just a little bit more, that's really what's going to decide this ball game tonight. Wouldn't you know it, the team that scores the most points, they win pretty much 100% of the time. I'm sure it'll be that way again tonight on the Game of the Week. Say the word base. Say the word mess.
The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Uh, hello and welcome to Green Canyon High School in North Logan. I'm Eric Olson. This is the Valley Channel and this is the game of the week. Tonight, Green Canyon and Mountain Crest, a beautiful mid-September evening. Are you kidding me? It doesn't get much better than this. Mountain Crest is going to receive as they're doing the coin toss down there. Mountain Crest will get the ball first. Green Canyon 4-1 and one on the season 0-1. In region play after losing to Ridgeline 42 6 last week. They beat Skyline of Idaho, Morgan, Crimson Cliffs, and Park City. And every one of those games was close. They beat Skyline by one, Morgan by three, Crimson Cliffs by four, and Park City by two. Led by Jack Stevens, the junior quarterback. He's the son of Brandon Stevens, if you are a Cash Valley football aficionado. That name will sound familiar to you. If you're a BYU fan, Brandon Stevens, a standout at Logan High back in the day and played down at BYU and he helps coach this team. Right now, another guy that really helps this team out is Caden Stewart. Stewart, a junior wide receiver as well, leads his team in receptions, 24 catches, 272 yards and 11 yards per catch. Mountain Crest, one and four, losing to Stansbury, Wasatch, Logan and Bonneville with the win over Box Elder. And we saw them last week in a game that was tied with less than a minute left in the half. They gave up two touchdowns in the space of less than 50 seconds, and that was essentially the ball game. Terrell Lee gets his hand on this one, and it goes back into the end zone, and Mountain Crest will start out at their own 20-yard line. They've gone back and forth with quarterbacks. Have the Mustangs. Preston Lofthouse has played quarterback. Last week it was the sophomore Casey Crofts. And it looks like it's going to be Crofts again tonight. But Lofthouse, I think that's Lofthouse in the backfield with him. That might be Olsen. Eight and six look a lot alike. And there's a give. That running game of Mountain Crest we saw last week. They can move the chains. And that was Olsen picking up 11. They can move the ball in the Mustangs. They've just got to cut down on their mistakes because their mistakes have been fatal. Lofthouse spreads to this side with another receiver and two running backs in the backfield. Another give up the middle and a gain of a couple. Give three to Bindra. He didn't get a carry last week. It was Olsen McMurtry was really the hot hand last week. That's three down linemen for Green Canyon, they walk a backer up and they're going to try to get to the edge. Speaking of Mountain Crest, and Olsen can't get to the edge. I'm not sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. They are going to put him right back at the line of scrimmage and it's going to be third down and seven. And I 
I talked to Coach Ander about this game tonight. He said, hey, Mountain Crest kind of scares me. They can get that running game going, and, and they'll just hold on to the ball longer than you, and they'll really move the ball. He's nervous that he, he doesn't want them to put, the, put it all together against his Green Canyon team. Crofts. Double clutches, looking downfield. He's got a man, and he overthrows Lofthouse. Lofthouse had a step, and Crofts just sailed it over him. It would have been a first down out near midfield. Instead, it's going to be third down. Crofts may have had to, a chance to run it there, but he was keeping his eyes downfield and trying to make a play with his arm. Caden Stewart's got a return touchdown already this season, and he's setting up shop back at his 29-yard line. Kick it away from him, and it's going to roll inside the 25, down all the way to the 20-yard line before it finally dies. 46-yard punt, and Green Canyon Led by Jack Stevens, will take the field. Big number 55, Bryce Radford's a Utah State commit, plays along that offensive line. Another guy to watch is their tight end, Kyle Baker, number 16. He and Radford are lined up next to each other, and there's a guy behind them. Maybe uh, run to that side. Yeah, there they go. Running right up in behind is Christiansen. He's been out with an injury. And he's back tonight. He's got a couple yards on that carry. Stevens is the leading rusher on this team. 77 carries, 316 yards, four yards per carry. Two touchdowns for Stevens. He's 65 of 106 through the air, 61%, 724 yards, seven touchdowns, three picks. And he's going to the air now. He doesn't like what he sees, so he pulls it down. He's got first down yardage before he's walloped. Nine yards for Stevens and a first down for the Wolves. Empty backfield now for Green Canyon. Sending a man in motion. We got flags. I think Mountain Crest was off sides. I think they saw that play coming as Egan went in motion on the fly sweep. I think somebody from Mountain Crest might have jumped early. Saw it coming and wanted to get back in there. Let's see if he was drawn off. He was. So somebody for Green Canyon moving too soon. And it'll be first and 15. No, nope, they declined the penalty. So it's going to be second and 10. There's Jansen in the backfield now with Stevens. Four wide receivers. They're going to look the little tunnel screen down inside. They've got their man, and on the move is Fife. Flag in the backfield back at the 31-yard line as Fife works his way out to the 43, but let's check the laundry. Back where you'd expect an illegal block or a hold, and that's what it is. It's a hold on Green Canyon. So instead of first and 10, it's going to be second and 20. Green Canyon's going the wrong way. And you look at Radford on the end of that line there. He's a man amongst boys. <laughs> About 6'6". Here's some pressure. Steven steps up. I think that was a design run. He spun around, but he picks up all of the penalty yardage and a little bit more. It's going to be third down and six after a pickup of 14 from Stevens. And that 
that's something that Mountain Crest will have to watch for, try to keep him buttoned up in the pocket. That's easier said than done. Nobody really has yet. Four-man rush. Stevens going to unload. Looking downfield to Stewart, and Stewart can't get there. Stevens misses him by a couple of yards. So it'll be fourth down. After a couple of penalties help stall the Green Canyon drive. And Terrell Lee will go back deep for Mountain Crest. Fife on to punt. It's fourth and six. And Fife will kick it away. Oh, he got the side of the foot, and that hit one of the Mustangs. And it bounces right into the hands of Jackson Landon. It hit the foot of one of the Mustang blockers. It hit the back of his heel and bounced right into Landon's hands at Green Canyon. Has the first turnover of the game. And that's just nothing but bad luck for the orange and blue. Green Canyon in business at the 49-yard line. I mean, that kick kind of went off the side of Fife's foot. It looked like it was going to be great field position for Mountain Crest. Instead, it's a turnover because it hits the heel of one of the Mountain Crest blockers who was running away from it. Here's the give on the fly sweep to Stewart. He is caught in the backfield for a loss of about three. Doing a good job of setting the edge is Zach Freston. Preston saw it, set that edge, shed the blocker, and made the play just like they teach him all week long. Second and 12. And that heavy formation to the left, and they run instead to the right. Preston's in there on another tackle, and a pickup of three. It's going to be third and long. Bellis was in there as well for Mountain Crest. They're going to move that back. That was only a pickup of two. Third and ten for Green Canyon. Coach Craig Ander wants more explosives from his team, meaning plays of 20 yards or more. Stevens finds his man. They needed ten. They got six. Let's see what they do on fourth down. Now they're going to go for it. On fourth and four on the Mountain Crest 45. Just under six minutes to play in the first quarter. They give to Christensen. Into the line. I think he's got it. He's right at the sticks where one official and the other official has him by a good yard. He needed four. And he got four in the length of a football. You know, you're seeing that more and more on every level. Teams going for it on fourth down. It's one of those analytics things. Here's to Christensen, somebody coming in from the backside, and it's Olsen, and who else? Olsen and Bindrup. Bindrup shooting the gap. Looked like they pulled a guard, and Olsen ran in there. You know, when they pull those guards, you teach kids a lot of times, follow that guard, he'll take you right to the play, and that's what Bindrup did. And it's second down, and eight. Up top, looking for Fife, out of bounds, even if he did catch it, which he doesn't. No flags, and it's third down and eight. No score at Green Canyon, 5.09 to play in the first quarter. The Wolves on the move, third and eight at the Mountain Crest 39-yard line. Stevens lofts one in there and has his man. It's Stewart down to the 29, a 10-yard gain and a first down. Oh, 
So the Wolves move the chains. After the turnover, a methodical drive. Stevens fakes the give, rolls to his right. Looks across the field, has a man wide open. He has to wait for it. But Benjamin Elston looks it in, and it's a touchdown. point is up and good so after the turnover Green Canyon strikes first a 29 yard touchdown pass and it's 7-0 in North Logan Green Canyon on top well an interesting start to this game but you know what they're down the bands down there they're playing music right you start thinking about music you start thinking about places like KSM music music's all they do they don't sell groceries they're a full service music store they, ha they, they provide lessons. If you want lessons in guitar, bass, drums, ukulele, piano, you can go to KSM Music and get it. And band and orchestra rentals. The first month is free. Repairs are included. Quality name rentals. That's at KSM Music. It's in our name. 7-0 our score here with 7.55 to play. Excuse me, 4.55 to play. In the first quarter, Green Canyon on the board after the turnover. High, short kick, fielded about the 18-yard line. And returned up to the 31 by Cole Jones. So on the Mountain Crest, finding themselves in a hole early. They'll try to answer. Kirby, the lone wide receiver, to the left, two to the right, and two in the backfield with Crofts. Here's the give. Olsen is looking for a hole, and after an 11-yard run on his first carry of the night, it hasn't been much since. One yard on that one. Green Canyon packed that in. Coach Andrew told me, you know, we're a little undersized up front, but we're quick. And we cause a little bit of chaos. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Just wasn't anywhere for Olsen to run. Lee in the backfield. With Olsen and Crofts at quarterback. They just flipped the four eight formation. Now Crofts doesn't like what he sees, brings it down. His first read wasn't there. And he just brought it down and went to take off, and he lost two yards. Third down. It's the sophomore. We've seen that a couple of times on a couple of pass plays now where he's looked for something that wasn't there, and then he just kind of hesitates. And again, he's a sophomore, right? He might only be 15 years old. He might not be driving yet. Could be one of those older sophomores, but still. The game's still coming to him. They're going to fake the run play. Cross has a lot of time on the edge, throws back across the middle, and it's knocked away by Stewart. It would have been short of the first down anyway. And as Cross goes to the sideline, his coach, the offensive coordinator, is having had a little bit of an animated conversation with him at first, then put his hands on either side of his helmet, got real close to his face mask. And looked like he didn't look like he was yelling at him, looked like he was giving him some information. A lot of young players in both of these teams. Stewart's gonna get a chance from the 25. Gets a block. Cuts inside, flags back at the 38, and Stewart's across midfield, but it looks like it's coming back. Stop, 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 stop. 
Flag back at the 38 yard line and it's a hold on Green Canyon. So three penalties, two accepted on Green Canyon and the two accepted ones have both been a holding penalties. So the Wolves leading by a touchdown. Trot the offense back out onto the field. Egan and Fife, the lone receivers, both to the right side. Chris Jansen in the backfield. And he gets the call. Finds an opening. Boy, he's walloped after a nine-yard gain. I think that was Lofthouse that brought a two-by-four into that huddle. But Chris Jansen gets nine yards on the carry before he was so abruptly stopped. Looks like Oates, the sophomore, in the backfield now. Stevens looking to throw. Mountain Chris had that one sniffed out. Kirby saw that one coming all the way, and it ends up being a loss of four. One for three on third down for Green Canyon. And they've got another chance right here. Third down and five. Three wide receivers to the right. Stevens against the three-man rush. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Look out, down he goes. Chase down from the backside by Alex Ndikumana. And Nikumana gets him for about a four yard loss. I mean, he chased him all the way across the field. They rushed three, tried to keep a little bit of a pocket to keep Stevens in it. He escaped, and once he broke out, here came the linebackers. So five for the pretty good kick, and Lee calls for the fair catch at about the 32-yard line. And with 58 seconds to play in this first quarter and a 7-0 ball game that Green Canyon leads, Mountain Crest offense will take the field again. Thirteen yards offensively for Mountain Crest in this first quarter. All of it on the ground. I'm not privy to how they coach Crofts, where they, whether they tell him, look, don't run it. Look for somebody to throw it to. Only run it as a last resort because he's had a couple of lanes when he's gotten outside and he's tried to make the play with his hands. He's had some room to run. Again, it's easy for us to say that way up here. We can see the whole field. Now Lofthouse is a quarterback and they're just going to run student body left. Lofthouse picking up yardage, knocking people down and finally goes out of bounds clear up near the 43 yard line. Sixteen yards for Lofthouse. And they play Lofthouse out of the receiver but I, I wondered if maybe they wouldn't start using him a little bit more carry in the football. He's just a superior athlete, and he's actually, is he in the backfield again? He might be the quarterback now. He is. He's the quarterback on this possession. Preston Lofthouse, and somebody left early for Mountain Crest. And this is what the Mountain Crest offense does not need. They don't need to shoot themselves in the foot. We saw it so many times last week. Touchdown brought back, a couple of big plays brought back last week. And as the Mustangs just hurt themselves in so many ways against the Grizzlies team that didn't really need any help. 
Lofthouse stays in at quarterback. He's going to roll this near side, looking for somebody. Underneath has a man, it's Lee. And they pick up four of the five yards that were lost by penalty. And it's going to be second down and 11. 10 seconds left in the quarter, and I don't think Mountain Crest is going to run a play. They're not. They're going to head for the sideline and talk about it. And we'll step aside. 7 0 our score after one. Green Canyon leads Mountain Crest on the game of the week. Well, you're wondering what you should eat tonight? There's so many great choices in Cache Valley, but one of the best choices is the factory pizzeria. They've got that old East Coast atmosphere with the carved up wood tables and exposed brick. And if you're watching a ball game at home or kicking it at home and don't not want to go in there, hey, they've got, they've got uh, free delivery and daily specials. It's local free delivery. I mean, free, that's F-R-E-E, -E, free 99, buy none, get some free. And, and they also have free nachos with any large pizza. Their pizza is awesome. There's no, there's no crust like it anywhere in Cache Valley, anywhere in northern Utah. And it just is what makes it distinct. So just tell Fernando, Fernando, I want this kind of pizza, and make sure you add the free nachos to it. They're open late after the game. Head down to the factory pizzeria. We start the second quarter, Mountain Crest with a second and 11, and Green Canyon with a 7-0 lead. Preston Lofthouse, the quarterback now for Mountain Crest, as Croft started the game, had a couple of possessions that didn't really go anywhere. And so now they bring Lofthouse in for a little different look. Crofts went the whole way last week, and Crofts it looks like he's still out there, but he's playing receiver now. That might be Cooper Gardner, tight end, 19 and 18. They those jerseys wrinkle up and they look a lot alike. Fake the give. Lofthouse looking for an opening. Steps out of one tackle, puts his head down, and forces his way forward for five. It'll be third and seven. As the moon comes up over the mountains here in the beautiful Cache Valley. Leaves are starting to turn up the canyon. I was up there today noticing that. Give it about a week and we'll be hip deep in the color. Be interesting to see with how dry it was this year, how much color there will be. Maybe that late rain will bring us a little extra. Third and six. Lofthouse going to keep it. Green Canyon was ready for it. Lofthouse picked up three because he hit the hole in a hurry, but it's going to be fourth and three. Three carries, 24 yards for Lofthouse. Mountain Crest gets it out to the 48-yard line, but they're going to have to punt. Stewart back to receive. Merrill is the up man. Blocked. Green Canyon gets the block. It's picked up by the punter to mitigate any further damage, but Green Canyon gets in there and blocks the kick. Nick Nielsen, the punter, they've been close a couple other times. This time they get there. It looked like it might have been an 11, Tanner tie with the block. Green Canyon starts in Mountain Crest territory at the 47. Stevens looking for the sudden play to go the other way, throwing it to Stewart. And the defensive back Lee gets there just in time to knock it away. Second down. Stevens is four for seven, 41 yards and a touchdown here in this first half. The 
We've just started the second quarter. We played about a minute and 39 seconds. They fake the give to Christensen over the middle to Egan. Egan's close to the marker. It's going to be third and a yard. Logan only three or one of four on third downs there in that first quarter. They did convert a fourth down on their scoring drive. Baker's in the backfield with Chris Jansen and Stevens looking to throw. Going up top, Egan's got a step, waiting for it, and it's out of bounds. Boy, that one hung up there forever, and Egan had to wait. And that's fourth and one. And on a third and one like that, right, you can take that shot, try to go for the big one, because with some of the size you've got up front, look at look at this tight formation. Here's to they call this one Tatanka? I think they call this one Tatanka. <laughs> They're big heavy formation. Stevens keeps. Boy, there wasn't a, a lot of push, but they didn't need a lot of yards. This is going to be really close. Looking at this official on this near side. But he, let's see where they spot the ball. Man, I think they might measure this. I don't know if they got it. They did not. They're not even going to measure it. Mountain Crest football. Wow, they go heavy. But Mountain Crest got lower and stopped them for no gain on fourth down in the yard. And it's Mountain Crest football. Mustangs trail by seven. Let's see if that fourth down stop can inspire the offense. Lofthouse still in at quarterback. He's going to turn and fake. Hit just as he throws it. This one's a little bit short. Fighting for the ball, but caught by the Mustangs. A lot of fighting for it, but it was caught out there by Austin. There's a flag back at the 38. It would be a 34-yard reception. There's a, there's a flag at the 38-yard line of Green Canyon. Pass interference, that of course is declined. So Lofthouse connects for 34 yards. And it's first and 10 at the 29 yard line. Here's the give trying to get outside is Olsen. Puts his foot in the ground. It's not Olsen, it's five. Dan Bindrup. And Bindrup picks up nine. spot him back at the 22, so it's a pickup of eight. Second and short. So the clock runs here in the second quarter. 8.40 to play in the half and a 7-0 Green Canyon lead. That lead now being threatened by the Mustang team that's changed quarterbacks. Here's the give to Olsen. He's got running room. Kick it upfield toward the end zone. Touchdown. 22 yards on the gallop. Carson Olson. The junior. Wells on for the PAT to try to tie it up. K 
Kicks good, we're knotted up at seven. 8.29 to play in the first half, tie game at Green Canyon. So I'm, I'm at that stage in my life where kids are starting to leave the house, right? Moving, a, moving out to go to college, moving out and getting married. And I got an extra room in my house. I want to make an office, a home office out of it. Make sure I get something done in there so they don't come back, right? Well, I'm looking at places like Palmer Home Furnishings. I was looking at their website. Are you kidding me? You could be in there all day. They have so many, dozens and dozens of brands. They've got recliners, sofas, sectionals, everything you need for a home office like what I'm looking for. They've got mattresses, adjustable bases, and I even noticed outdoor furniture. Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're doing a nice little fire pit area that... Uh, that we started here this fall, I'm gonna finish next spring. I'm gonna be looking for some furniture toward that, so I was looking at their website for that. Palmer's Home Furnishings in Providence, they've got everything you need. Knotted up at seven here in North Logan, as Wells kicks this one high and short. Fielded at the six yard line, and some running room out near the 30. Goes Adam Merrill. They're going to spot it at the 29. And now Green Canyon's offense takes the field to try to get something going. They took advantage of a turnover, a, a punt that ended up hitting one of the Mountain Crest blockers on the back of his leg. They recovered it and then scored. It's been tough sledding since then. Here's Christy Anson with a solid run, seven yards. Six carries, 26 yards for 37. He's another junior. Both of these rosters, lots of uh, 10s and 11s on there with some interspersed 12s. Stevens. Looking outside has Stewart. Stewart up to the 45 yard line and a first down, gain of nine. Two catches, 19 yards for Stewart. 59 yards on six completions and 10 tries for Stevens. Three down linemen for the Mustangs. Creeping up linebackers, here comes one. They go to Stewart on the near side. Stewart's hemmed in, bounces off a couple of would-be tacklers, moves forward for about three before they finally blow the whistle. Luke Burbank stuck his nose in there first, number 22. And Stewart's gonna limp off the field. Green Canyon doesn't wanna see that. He's one of their main weapons. Egan's on the sidelines as well. They were looking at him, but now he looks like he's ready to go back in. Second and seven. Here's Jansen with the carry. He picks up two. It's going to be third and five. see Stewart in there and they're looking at him on the sideline he is not putting much weight on that left leg that snap came before Stevens was ready look out Freston's got a hold of him he gets away looking downfield he's got Baker big block and Baker's out to cross the 41 they got a blind side block Lofthouse took one in the ear hole, and that's not legal anymore. Good job by Stevens keeping that one alive. You can't come peel back and ear hole somebody anymore at any level in football, from the Pee Wee through the high school, anywhere. 
That was during the play, so it's still going to be third down. That's a 15-yarder. That's going to take it clear back to the 43. So it's going to be third and 12. Boy, Freston looked like he had Stevens, and Stevens got away. They bring one linebacker, and they go deep to Egan. He's got a step. He's got the ball. He's got a touchdown. That's an explosive, 57 yards. Egan had the step and Stevens put it right there. Mountain Crest caught a break with the penalty. And then Green Canyon said, oh, level of difficulty, ratchet it up. All right then, we'll just get more yards. Whistles, flags. Lions, lambs, dogs and cats lying down with one another. Too much time, delay a game on Green Canyon. So the PAT is gonna be 18 yards. Hell no, let's see, where is he setting that up? About the 15 yard line, it's going to be a 25 yard PAT right down the middle. Caleb Nagley, five field goals, eight PATs on the season. Up and good. And Green Canyon takes the lead back on the big play, 57 yards with a touchdown. 5.25 to play in the half, 14-7, Wolves. All right, I've got a daughter that's gonna be 16 here real soon. She's gonna, she's gonna need a car, right? So I'm shopping for cars and I'm doing a lot of it online because I don't know, I don't, like to, I don't like to go down to the used car lot. I don't like to be hassled down there, but one place I'm looking is at Rich's Cars and Credit. One thing that they do, and it's their mission, stress-free shopping is their mission. They've got almost 100 cars in their inventory. They've got selections of cars from under 10K, right? I just kind of look in there because I'm looking for one for a teenager. They've got one cars for under 25K. They've got the trucks, they've got the four wheel drives, they've got the SUVs, like you said, almost 100 cars in their inventory. And you can get your financing from your credit union without having to go to the credit union. Riches can do all the work from you. You can do it all right there, so Riches is a place to go and the place to be if you're in the in the uh, market for a used car, Riches, Cars and Credit. Green Canyon was looking for the big strike. They get it there. Short kick, fielded at the 19 yard line. And it turned out to about the 27 and Mountain Crest will take over once again, trailing by seven. He started with Crofts as the quarterback. He had a couple series. And didn't have a lot of success on those series, and so they ended up going to Lofthouse. He played quarterback most of the year last year and has been quarterback off and on this season. And he's back there again now, he throws the bullet. Was off the receiver's arms. Kirby turned and that ball was on him. And ricochets off him and out of bounds, second down. And that's Lofthouse's first incompletion. Three receivers to this side, one to the far side, and Lofthouse following a blocker. Bounces it outside, turns the corner, and he's hauled down 
right near the marker. Let's see if they give him enough for the first down. I think it's going to be third and short, and it is. Nine yards for Lofthouse, third and one. Mountain Crest is over on third down. Kirby, your lone receiver to the near side. Two backs in the backfield. They're going to turn and hand it to Olsen. Olsen needs a yard. He's got three. And they move the sticks and pick up their first first down of this ball game. Five carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown for Olsen. Carson Olsen. Mm. 69 yards on 11 carries offensively for Mountain Crest. 38 yards through the air. Turn and give, and there's a seam. Closes quickly, but Bindrup picks up eight before you know it. I talked to Coach Kearns last week. He said, you know, we've got, we show flashes. We'll have a drive here and a drive, a couple of drives where we just look like we got it going on. And the problem is there's, you know, eight, nine, ten drives a game. But he, he feels like it's coming along, especially if they can get that running game going. And we're seeing the flashes tonight, too. Turn and give to Olsen. He looks for the edge. He's got it. Puts his shoulder down and picks up a first down. Four yards and a new set of downs. The Mountain Crest as they methodically matriculate the pigskin down the gridiron. They're in Green Canyon territory at the 48. 310 to play in the half. Plenty of time for the Mustangs. They've got all their timeouts. Lofthouse was looking for the throw, and the guy wasn't there, so he tried to run, and he ends up getting taken down. Loss of five, another sack for Green Canyon. They're second. Baker was there to haul him down, second and 15. Lofthouse was looking to the flat, and there was nothing there. And Green Canyon's really not playing for the deep ball. They don't look. They've got two, two high safeties, and they're back you know, about 13 yards. Now here comes the screen, set up well. Olsen picks up the penalty yardage and a lot more. 14 yards. It's going to be third and one. Third and a yard, and you have to think it's four down territory for Mountain Crest as we're under two minutes to play now in the half. The Mustangs trail by seven. They're at the Green Canyon, 39, third and a yard. Quarterback run, design, Lofthouse with a stiff arm. Lofthouse spinning, Lofthouse thrown down at about the 24. 15 yards on third and one. Six carries, 43 yards for Lofthouse. And it's first and 10 at the 24 of Green Canyon. A turn and give again. There's a flag as the play starts. I think somebody moving early for Mountain Crest. That stops the clock with 1.15 to play in the half. Coach Kearns looks at the official. He turns back to him and says something. And this is what we were talking about last week, right? Mountain Crest shooting themselves in the foot. Let's see, maybe Green Canyon lined up off sides, but it looked like somebody moved. Oh, it's on Green Canyon. They have too many guys out on the field. Illegal substitution. 
Wow, okay, I thought maybe somebody had moved early for Mountain Crest. They did not shoot themselves in the foot. Green Canyon administered the wound to their own metatarsals. That's their fifth penalty of the night. Mountain Crest with only one. And now it should be first down and five at the 19. They haven't set the football yet. Well, they have set the football, they haven't moved the marker. Now they do. Clock starts, and the Mustangs inside the Green Canyon 20, looking to tie it up. They run the little counter, cutting it back inside and picking up four and a half is Binger. And Mountain Crest will take a timeout. It's going to be second and one. With 59 ticks on the first half clock, and the Mustangs trying to knot this thing up. It's been a good first half. Both teams, we, we figured it'd be a defensive battle, and both teams playing some defense. The offense is coming through. A big play for Green Canyon, and then a short drive off of a turnover. And Mountain Crest got a big play of their own with a 22-yard touchdown run. Green Canyon four and one, Mountain Crest one and four. Both teams 0 and one in region play. Rich lines at Skyview tonight. We were originally going to do that game, but they got KSL jumping in to do it. So we came down here to do this one, get as many of the locals on TV as possible. Logan's over at Bear River. Second and a yard. Lofthouse fakes the give. Looking downfield, he's in trouble. Nobody open downfield and he has to take the sack. A five yard loss for Lofthouse. And that's sack number three in this first half for Green Canyon. Lofthouse has gone down to the turf a few times. 46 seconds now left in this first half. And it's third down. It was second and one, and Mountain Crest elected to throw it. They've been running it pretty well, and now it's going to be third and eight. They're trying to catch Green Canyon. think and run and maybe thinking they can catch them in something. Logan leads Bear River 18 to nothing. Rich line leading Skyview 7 nothing. It's 14-7 Green Canyon here. Third and long for Mountain Crest, deep in Green Canyon territory. Screenplay coming. First down. Nine yards. Is that Bindrup? I think it was. And another set of downs, Mountain Crest. Goes to the air again, Lofthouse throws back across the middle, catches made down to the one yard line. They're gonna spot it, let's see, at the two and Mountain Crest hurrying up. They've got a timeout if they want it. They gotta hurry, nine seconds, eight. Lofthouse is gonna keep it. Lofthouse, touchdown! With two seconds left in the half. Lofthouse ran over one of the defenders from two yards out. Wow.
Wells on for the equalizer. Wells kick up. Wells kick good. We're tied at 14 with two seconds left in the half. We'll keep it right here. We've got a good one brewing in North Logan. My oh my. Mountain Crest using the last few minutes of that half to drive down and they got on they got took a sack on second and one. It was third and eight. They end up getting a first down and then a 12 yard gain down to the two yard line and Lofthouse runs it in from there. Assume that Mountain Crest would just squib this one. Get to the half. Green Canyon will get the ball to start the second half. If you remember Mountain Crest got the ball first. And they do just squib it. Baker picks it up. It turns it out to about the 32-yard line, and that's going to be the end of the first half. A good one here at Green Canyon. We're all tied up at 14. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. You know, many of you know that I grew up playing high school sports and it was a big part of my life. You know, we go to school and we learn about math and science and uh, reading and all those things. And uh, for me, the extracurricular activities helped me to uh, focus myself and do well in, in those as well. Um, I played uh, high school football and basketball back at Logan High School, late 80s. I graduated in 90. Uh, many of you may know that um, that happens to be the two years that Logan High School took uh, state in football my junior and senior year. And I remember back when I was a junior, um, our first two games in 19, at the fall of 1988, we actually lost one to Box Elder and one to Roy, both in very close games. And I remember we walked, walked off the field that day, we were 0-2. And, and as a team, we were facing a great deal of adversity. And uh, you know, high school sports was probably my, one of my first um, opportunities to deal with adversity and realize that life didn't end because we lost a couple games. And I remember someone in the locker room talking about how, hey, how does 11 and two sound? And uh, as a team, we kind of rallied around the idea that we could still be 11 and two and still win the state championship and get past those early setbacks. Um, expectations that year were extremely high, um, both the senior class and our junior class had gone undefeated as freshmen. Um, the expectation was that we were going to win a lot of games and, and win state. When we lost those first two, it, it felt like things weren't coming together the way they needed to. But it was nice to see that the guys on the team rally together, battle through the adversity, and kind of find a common goal to start winning games. And uh, by the end of that season, we were 11 and 2. Obviously, we won the region, we won the state championship. And by the end of the year, I think the state championship score was 44 to 12. So as a team, we grew together and we really became, I know it's kind of cliche, but we became a band of brothers where we uh, fought for each other and realized that we could overcome you know, anything that came our way. You know, as I, as I look at some of the uh, high school sporting um, challenges that I had, I realize how it's helped me in business today. You know, every day, um, maybe not every day, but frequently in our business, we'll have some things that maybe don't go our way. And I think high school sports helped me to realize that, you know, uh, that the, the, the day doesn't end there. You have to kind of work through things and overcome those things. And uh, when you get through those things, you become a better person and, and you, you realize that you can learn and grow from adversity and not let it be something that overcomes you and, and, and turns, you, uh, turns you negative, but it can turn into a positive. I learned to play in a team game, you know, that together we could play as teammates and uh, we could build and, and grow together. And uh, 
realized that I relied on other people to help me get uh, tasks done. And as I've obviously in business, I rely on people on our team to get their job done to accomplish a common goal. And so I think the high school sports and, pl and playing on team sports helped me to help me to grow and learn how to uh, be a good teammate and how to be, be a supportive teammate, help my uh, teammates grow as well as we battle through. So um, I'm just a big, I'm a big fan of high school sports. I've always loved um, the character that they can build. I, I like how you know, there's time, at times you feel like you want to quit or you don't want to go for, uh, move forward. And uh, high school sports help you to, helps you to realize that you can continue to move forward and not quit. And even though the chips are down, you can continue, you continue to battle and you continue to build and you continue to grow on, on what you've done in the past and look for brighter days ahead, even, even when things may be challenging. This is why here at Rich's Cars and Credit, we support high school sports. give it a free nachos when they bought a large pizza they just got a mention to us and say we hear they are in the Cash Valley Channel and look at that deliciousness that they're gonna get right here a free nacho so anybody following the Valley Channel you come in you say we saw this ad on the Valley Channel and we'd like to claim the free nachos say so we're gonna give you a free nacho you earn your nachos right there automatic <laughs> started Palmer Home Furnishings 17 years ago on 10th West and we started Mountain Ridge Furniture a couple years ago out here on the highway in Providence and recently kind of out of the blue not really planned we had somebody purchase our building on 10th West. The result was for us to merge the two businesses and bring it all into one out here in Providence. Three blocks south of Macy's out here on the highway you can't miss it if you drive on the highway in Providence you can't miss it. It's a different kind of outlook to be selfless as opposed to selfish. You become the most happy whenever you're less worried about yourself than you are somebody else. I want to excel at sports. I want to excel in the classroom. I want to excel in the community. So I mean, the only way to truly excel is to just give it your all. You know, give it your passion, give it your determination, and just do what you can do to make a positive impact. Whatever Ian does, he does it all the way. Not only because of what he can do athletically, but he is a man of integrity. There have been many times in Ian's life where I think it would have been easy for him to roll over and give up. Ian's freshman year, his father passed away. Their dad was a really good person, but struggled with alcohol addiction. You know, he wasn't a presence in my life, but I always kind of longed for him to be. I don't think you ever played catch with your dad, and never tossed a football around. He could have easily gone down another path, but he chose not to. I was determined to be my own person, regardless of who my father was. And it just speaks volumes about his character and the resilience in him that, you know what, I'm gonna make myself who I wanna be in the future. And he's done that. I see him both in the classroom, outside of the classroom, and in the community. And Ian is that quiet leader. I think that that really epitomizes who Ian is as a person. He is your prototypical offensive lineman. He knows he's not gonna get the headlines, and he's okay with that. Whenever the play starts, I'm more concerned about the people behind me. My quarterback's health is obviously the most important thing to me, which reflects how I view life. I want to you know, give it my all for other people, not just myself. You don't have to be the center of attention to be a successful cog in the wheel. This ability to selflessly give uh, and, and be willing to support, and not for the attention, but because it's the right thing to do, is a lesson all of us can learn. You can overcome whatever you set your mind to. You just have to not 
dwell in what's wrong with your life. You just have to strive to be better, be more passionate, be determined, whether it's on the field or off the field. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station, for over 30 years. Fourteen, fourteen. our score here at Green Canyon as we get ready to start the second half. Eric Olson along with you after an entertaining first half. Looking at some of the other scores around the region just up the road. Skyview is playing host to Ridgeline, and Ridgeline near the, the last score we had, that was nearing halftime. Ridgeline leading 21 7 in that ball game, and Logan also, that was a halftime score, really close to halftime. Logan was leading Bear River at Bear River 25 to 14. You know, the RPI came out for the first time. Remember, these teams get ranked as Mountain Crest gets set to kick off to start the second half. They rank, and the rankings are, you know, by the strength of the record of the, the record of the team, the record of their opponents, and the record of their opponents' opponents. As Stewart takes this one back near the goal line, out to about the 23. Well, Ridgeline comes in number one in 4A in the RPI, in the initial RPI rankings, followed by Desert Hills. Then Green Canyon is third. Logan fourth, Dixie fifth, Skyview number six. Skyview, we saw Skyview against Mountain Ridge. Mountain Ridge is the number one ranked team RPI-wise in 6A. And you gotta go down to 12 to find Mountain Crest. Green Canyon starts with a run. And there's not a lot there for Christiansen as he's hauled down, it's just as he gets to the edge. About a yard. But remember that RPI, all the teams make the playoffs. And you're ranked according to your RPI. And the higher, if you're one of the top X amount, then you get a home game. And you could be going back and forth between St. George as a complete pass thrown on second and nine. You could be in St. George one week and in Logan the next week, the way this RPI works. That's a 10-yard game. And now a quick run, picking up eight as they're playing with a little bit of, uh, playing with a little bit of tempo now. Gonna hand to Christensen again, and he hits a wall at the line of scrimmage. Second effort will get him out near the first down. I think he has it. He does. 
So Green Canyon coming out of the locker room after a long halftime because it's homecoming. Running with the no huddle, running up tempo. Here's another good run and a plus play on first down. In fact, it's plus plus as a 13 yard run. Oates gets the carry, 28. Egan in, he's gonna join Fife on the left side of the formation. Stewart's out there as well, lined up behind Baker. A little bit of confusion. Now they're gonna swap Egan to the other side. Now they're gonna swap them both. Plenty of time, 10 seconds on the play clock. Stevens is gonna turn and hand to Oates. He's got another gap and he scampers through it for seven. We saw Stewart go out midway through the second quarter with what looked like a leg injury, but he's out there now and it's moving just fine. Four wide receivers and Christensen back in the ball game. Christensen with the give, picks up a yard. Third down. It's gonna be third and about three. A short three. Tied at 14, the opening drive of the second half. Nine minutes to play in this third quarter. Green Canyon, third and a long two. Here's the little slant pass to five feet. Hauls it in for nine yards and a first down. And the drive keeps going. Green Canyon now two of seven on third downs. They've struggled on third down and they've committed five penalties in that first half. None here in this second half. That's just underway. Chris Jansen with the give, and he bowls his way forward for five. Second and five, Stevens snap through his fingers, bounces right back to him, he's in trouble. Tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, but does not. He loses three, four yards. And in trouble with the snap, and a loss of four, and it'll bring up third and nine. And they stay in that no huddle. Baker in motion. They're gonna throw a screen to Christensen. Somebody came up, I think that was Lofthouse. Sniffed that one out, came up from the safety spot and threw down a hit on Christensen. And it's only a three yard gain and it's fourth down. Fourth and eight, and a field goal attempt from 40 yards for Nagley. If you're Mountain Crest, you gotta watch for a fake, because that's a long attempt. And they're gonna kick it, nearly blocked. That's got the leg, but it's wide to the left. So we're still tied at 14, and the Mountain Crest offense will take the field. A promising drive ends with no points for Green Canyon as they had it down to the Mountain Crest 20 and then a snap gets through the hands of Jack Stevens. He ends up losing the four yards and they were never able to recover. And a missed field goal, there, there was plenty of leg on that one. It just sailed wide left. The Mountain Crest had a good little offensive rhythm going to end the half. See if they can find it again. Lofthouse 
looking for the edge. He's not going to throw it, and he tucks it and gets five yards. Nine carries, 45 yards for Lofthouse and a touchdown. So five yards per carry for this senior. He didn't start the last two games as a quarterback. He came in on the third series tonight. And he's been in there ever since, taking over for the sophomore Crofts. And they run up inside, but they stop the play, they blow it dead. Somebody going early for Mountain Crest will be second and 10. For the Mustangs, that's only their second penalty of the night. They had trouble with flags last week. But tonight, as I said, only the second infraction. Two yard touchdown run for Olsen and a two yard run for Lofthouse. The scores for Mountain Crest. Stevens has thrown for two touchdowns for Green Canyon. Misdirection and Lofthouse gets the penalty yardage back and a first down. On second and 10, he picked up 11 yards. They sent everybody going one way and then Lofthouse ran the other. They sealed off the backside well. And it's first down. Loft house and receivers two by two. Fumbles the snap. There was a Green Canyon player there at the same time as Loft house. So that's twice in this second half. We've seen quarterbacks have trouble with the snap. Lofthouse, that one came right to him, and he just dropped it out of his hands. Falling forward, if the ball just kind of dribbled forward. It's a loss of four. Second and 14. Now let's call it three. Lofthouse looking for a block. One defender runs by. He picks up that loss yardage, plus one. It's going to be third down and nine. Three of seven on third downs for the Mustangs. 445 to play in a fast moving third quarter. A lot of noise coming from the Green Canyon student body on third and nine. Lofthouse finds a seam. Look out! Hold out of bounds at the 25 yard line of Green Canyon. <laughs> 43 yards. <laughs> Lofthouse with 100 yards rushing on the night after that carry. 13 carries, 100 yards. This is what Coach Kearns wanted to be able to do with this team. To run the ball, to smash that up in there and control the line of scrimmage and control the game. Turn and give, Olsen. Runs for four. They've run some misdirection in there, and they've run a couple of different looks, have Mountain Crest, but on the whole, it hasn't been anything really fancy. 
They're just lining up and playing football. That one was a little bit of a counter, faking one way and coming back the other. And a pickup of a couple for Olsen, and it'll be third down and four. Before the last third down, Mountain Crest was three of seven on third down. That doesn't sound great, right? Well, they picked up the first down last time. Then they're four of eight, 50 percent. That sounds a lot better. Here's their ninth third down of the ball game. Cutting back inside and being stopped short is Olson. They tried to get the flow going all one way and then handing it back off coming the other way. And Green Canyon stayed disciplined. And there's no gain. Fourth and four. Wells stays on the bench. They're not going to try for the field goal. The clock running with 2.25 to play in the quarter. Eight seconds on the play clock. Five seconds. They're going to have to hurry. Two seconds. One second. They're not going to get it off. Too much time. There's giant play clocks in the end zone. On either end zone. You can see them. You can watch them. And you just watch that time tick down. And Mountain Crest takes the five yard penalty. It was gonna be fourth and four and they just took way too much time getting set up. Out of the huddle and set up. And now it's gonna be fourth and nine. At the 27 yard line. I think Mountain Crest feels good enough about their defense that they're going to go ahead and go for it. Here comes the noise. Lofthouse looking for the edge. He's not going to get there. Fourth and nine and Lofthouse loses three. And Green Canyon takes over on downs. Two oh seven to play in the third quarter. And the homecoming crowd loves the defensive stand. Jack Stevens brings the offense back out for Green Canyon. Heavy formation to the left. Let's see if that's where they go with it. Stevens is going to throw on the quick little in pattern and getting there just as the ball does is Terrell lead and knock it away incomplete. Stevens threw a good pass, but Lee got there just as the ball did, swiped through and knocked it away. Four wide. Well, Green Canyon, Christensen in the backfield. He's going to stay in and block. Three man rush. Stevens uncorks, looking for Stewart, and he overthrows him by four or five yards. Bindrup was back there on the coverage. Third and ten. See if Mountain Crest brings any pressure after Stevens. Oh, they call a defensive hold on Mountain Crest. Didn't see the flag and looked up just in time to see the. Just in time to see the call by the official. And instead of third and ten, it's first and ten. Green Canyon out at the 42-yard line. 
new life into this offensive series. Give to Christensen. Up the middle, picks up four. Baker, Fife, and Stewart are all going to split out to the left. Egan here to the near side, and Christensen in the backfield. No, yeah, he's going to leave the backfield now. Trouble with the snap for Stevens. Looking for an opening. And off a busted play, he picks up four yards. Six carries, 19 yards for Stevens. He's been brought down for a couple of sacks. One was because of a snap that got away from him, and another time he was just flat out sacked by Freston. Third and two. Looking up top for Egan again, and Stevens overthrows him. Fourth and two. Stevens is now 11 of 18 for 141 yards and two touchdowns. And at midfield, Green Canyon looks like they're going to punt it away. Fife back there to punt. 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Terrell Lee back for Mountain Crest. He's going to back up inside his own 15 yard line. Fife kicks it away. Lee calls for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 22. Mustangs take over with 45 seconds to play in a scoreless third quarter. We're tied at 14. Logan was handling Bear River. Ridgeline had a two score lead on Skyview last we heard. We get an update, we'll pass that along to you. Try to get one at the quarter. Mountain Crest has got the running game going in this ball game. They've been looking for it. They've got it tonight. 153 yards rushing. 94 through the air. Whoa, they lost some there. Jackson landed, says nah. And Olsen loses four. Mountain Crest will have to run a play. There's about a two second differential from the game clock to the play clock. Lofthouse is gonna keep, he's looking to throw. He's gonna uncork down the sideline and say, take a shot. And that's the end of the third quarter. No flags. We're tied at 14 as we head to the fourth quarter. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. You know, one of our game sponsors of the game of the week is Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Choosing a hearing pro is a huge decision. Right, hearing aids, they aren't prescribed like glasses are, so proper hearing aid recommendation and fitting depends on the professional taking care of you. Dr. Paul Danes is a board-certified audiologist, and let's, let's hear from one of his patients. Carolyn says that Dr. Danes was so amazing, worked for two hours to help me get my hearing loss under control and get my hearing to a level that I could hear the best that I could. So Dr. Paul Danes, the folks down at Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, don't settle for just anybody. Have a professional help you out. If you're having some hearing problems, go see Dr. Danes at Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Well, they're introducing some peewees out there here at the quarter break. Probably one of the, <laughs> one of the little league teams or something. 
as both the teams are coming back onto the field and getting ready to start this fourth quarter. Mountain Crest in a deep hole, third and 14, as we get set to start the final quarter of play. No score for either team in that third quarter. Mustangs looking at third and 14. They hold up play to get the field cleared off from the youngsters. Now they make it ready. See what the Mustangs do on third and long. Lofthouse is going to keep it. Lofthouse has an opening. Lofthouse picks up pretty good yardage, but he's going to be stopped about five yards shy of the first down. He picked up nine. He needed 14. Lofthouse with a big night, a touchdown, and 106 yards rushing. He's thrown for 94 yards on eight of 10. He did not throw a pass in the third quarter. Well, Mountain Crest backed up. Now it's become a field position game. This is a big deal. They're going to kick. They got one blocked already from deep in their own territory. They get this one away. Oh, boy, does it take a good Mountain Crest bounce. Picked up on, a, on the hop and returned up to the 39. So still pretty good field position for Green Canyon. You always hold your breath when your punt returner, <laughs> when your punt returner picks up one of those that's bouncing like that. We've seen that two or three times with Green Canyon tonight. That they've had a ball on the turf and it's bounced right back to them. And that's straight luck because you never know where a football is going to bounce. The oblong shape. Makes it a rodeo every time it hits the ground. Turn and give to Christensen. Looking for the edge down he goes, face mask. He's hauled down by the face mask. And that's going to be a 15 yarder. I think that was Crofts. Yeah, I can't tell if that's an 18 or a 10. Might have been Budge, number 10, because he's playing that linebacker spot. So it's a 15 yarder against. Mountain Crest, one penalty in the first half against Mountain Crest, four here in this second half, and we just started the fourth quarter. Now Green Canyon into Mountain Crest territory after the penalty. Motion, and they run up in behind the motion, and Christensen slips on his cut. No gain, second down. Christensen, 14 carries, 49 yards. This last five carries, two, one, five, four, zero. In tough sledding as they turn the hand to Oates. Oates finds a seam, stood up after a gain of about six. He's been a nice little change of pace back for Green Canyon tonight. It's going to be third and four. Long for Elston's your receiver to this near side. That's five receiver set. Look out. Stevens has to vacate. He reaches, but he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard and a half. I think Green Canyon is going to go for this one. Fourth and about a yard and a half. Ball on the Mountain Crest, 41. 
Nine minutes to play in the ball game. We're tied at 14. Stevens gonna fake the give. He's got pressure, in trouble. Can he get out of it? He throws the pick. He got out of it enough to get the ball away and then he threw the pick to Terrell Lee. Lee came up hard on that little pattern. It was this little sit down pattern and Lee just stepped right around the receiver and took it away. So both teams with a turnover now as Stevens throws his fourth interception of the season against six touchdowns. And that one was right at the first down marker. Stevens makes the mistake, and it's first and 10 Mountain Crest. Give to Olson, nothing there. Picked up a yard, and the only reason he picked up a yard is because there was a pretty decent initial push, and he hit the, he hit the hole hard because he was spun around and thrown backwards after that. Two to this side, one to the other, and two in the backfield. They're gonna fake the give, and Lofthouse looking downfield, throws it up, catcher no. There's a flag in the backfield, Lofthouse is gonna be roughing the passer. So I think they called the pass incomplete, but Lofthouse got spun down after he got rid of it. And they're gonna call roughing the passer on Green Canyon. Coates took him down. Here's the call, personal foul, roughing the passer. The Green Canyon with their first penalty of the second half. Their sixth of the game. And it takes the ball into Green Canyon territory at the 46. 8.05 to play in the ball game. Tied at 14, Mountain Crest on the move. Lee in the backfield with Lofthouse and Olsen setting up the screen. Get it to Olsen. He gets one block, but there were about four black jerseys there. Minimal gain on first down. Ends up being a gain of three. Lofthouse's first complete pass of the second half. Three to the left, Kirby to the right. And one back in the backfield with Lofthouse. Lofthouse fakes the give, keeps it. Oh, he had an opening and he lost his balance, or he might still be running. Three yard gain, it's going to be third down. House is keeping it. Turns the corner, spins. He's right near the marker. I think he's got it. He needed four and a half, and he got five. So the drive stays alive for Mountain Crest. They're at the Green Canyon 36, and they're not in any hurry. Clock running and approaching six minutes to play. Three left, one right again. Give it to Bindrup. 
he picks up a couple. Kirby heads for the sideline. Valentine on the field, number two. Bindrup is going to be replaced by Olsen. They hurry and bring the play in. They've got to hurry because they're under. They're at six seconds. Five, four on the play clock. They're going to have to call timeout. They don't get it off. They had to call timeout. Mount Grass had to call timeout. You don't want to give up five yards here. Instead of second and eight, then you'd have second and 13. Wells has a pretty live leg. Their kicker. I don't think he has any field goals on the season. Doesn't look like. I don't know what is. What his accuracy looks like. So now Chris takes the time out, and they're going to talk about it. Because the play clock, they'd run a play, and they brought one guy off, then they brought somebody else off late, and brought a different play in, and they didn't even get out of the huddle until seven seconds. Ridgeline in the third leads Skyview 28-10. Bear River's taking the lead on Logan, 28-25. Logan was up big in that game at one time, and now Bear River's come back and taking the lead. Second and eight, no safety. Everybody's creeping up. As the Loft House gains a couple, it's going to be third down and about six. And I'm watching this. I'm trying to watch that defense. They've been playing the too high safety, but they keep the creeping those safeties. Those safeties keep creeping up closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. We'll see if Mountain Crest tries to take a shot over the top. I just don't know if Mountain Crest has anybody that can really run away from you, though. Lee has some pretty good wheels. Third down and six. Four-man rush. Lofthouse over the middle to Lee. Incomplete. Merrill's lucky he put his hands in Lee's back and kind of pushed off of him to get to get uh, balanced for that ball to try to make a play on it. The official didn't see it. That very well could have drawn a flag. He didn't do it much, just a little bit, just to kind of steady himself to try to make the play. It was actually a pretty heady move. Fourth down and six. The Mustangs will go for it. 4.26 to play in the game. Screen coming. Incomplete. Green Canyon ball. Green Canyon saw that was a screen late in the process. A couple of guys start coming to the quarterback. When nobody blocks you, you got to know that's a screen. And it, it's, you could see that dawning on the linemen, and they stopped and kind of turned around. And there was one guy in amongst all of that, and he ran right through the ball. And I think it might have been Baker, because that's who they're helping up off the ground. He ran right through a couple of blockers and blew that up. A couple of would-be blockers. They mostly just got in his way. This Mountain Crest had that set up pretty well, and they they caught most of the Green Canyon defense looking. But Baker was able to stay home and make the play. Four twenty-one to play, and now Green Canyon with a chance to take the lead. Give it off to Christensen. He's into the secondary and picks up 11. 60 yards on 15 carries for Christensen. That was his longest of the night. He 
he's back after missing some time with an injury. Egan Fife from Baker to the far side. No, that's Stewart to the far side. Fife is to this side. Hand it off to Christensen again. Again, he's into the secondary. This time a pickup of 10. Two plays, 21 yards. This is Christensen's up to 70 yards rushing. Hundred and seven yards on the ground for Green Canyon as a team. Stewart in motion. Give it to him on the fly sweep. He turns the corner. Picks up four. Now Green Canyon saying, all right, let's see if we can run this clock, bleed it down, and get ourselves in scoring range, whether a field goal or a touchdown. And Try to get out of here with this one. This is Green Canyon's used to this. They've won close games all season. This is no big deal. Give to Oates. He's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Third and six. After the things that have happened in this Green Canyon team, football is probably no big deal to them. They lost a teammate a few weeks ago. Teammate passed away. That was tough on this team and the coaching staff and this community. And Coach Anders said, we're trying to help these kids find the joy again, find the joy in football, find the fun in it. It's a heavy thing for young people to deal with. Third and six, there'll be a lot of joy in this stadium if Green Canyon can pick up this first down and with the clock running down, the Wolves need a timeout. Similar to what happened with Mountain Crest earlier, Green Canyon needs a timeout because the play clock was winding down to triple zeros. There's 2.06 on the clock. We're tied at 14. Neither team has scored here in this second half. The largest lead for Green Canyon has been seven. Mountain Crest has never led. They tied it up with two seconds to play in the first half with a two yard touchdown run. By Preston Lofthouse who came in in relief of the sophomore Crofts. This wasn't working out for Crofts here tonight so the coaches made a change. Crofts is a sophomore, he's got a lot of time ahead of him to get better. Stevens is gonna keep. Stevens putting his head down and picking up the first down. His third and six, he got eight. Eight carries, 29 yards for Stevens. One forty-five to play and the clock running. First and 10 at the Mountain Crest, 36. Stevens, this one is a run all the way. And he picks up 10. Clock stops as they move the chains. And then it starts again, 125 to play in the ball game. Green Canyon driving toward the go-ahead score. Ball at the Mountain Crest 26. Baker in motion. They're gonna run up behind Baker. Christensen picks up six. And they've just run the ball on this possession. Mountain Crest has done a pretty good job holding this offense in check tonight. But on this possession, they have run the football. They haven't put it in the air. Now they're going to air it out. Stevens wide open, fight, touchdown.
Stevens atoning for the interception on the last series by throwing the go-ahead touchdown pass with 36 seconds to play on this one. PAT is good. And with 36 seconds left in the ball game, Green Canyon leads Mountain Crest 21-14. Anderson Seed and Gardner in the historical district there on Center Street. Guess what time it is? It's bulb time. You like the spring color? Well, now is the time to put those bulbs in the ground. There's a huge selection of bulbs down there at Anderson Seed and Gardner. They're just in, and they're known for much more than their seeds. They're known as much for their info and their information they give people as they are for their seeds and their other things that you can buy down there for your garden. That's Anderson's down in the historical district, down on Center Street, Anderson Seed and Garden. It's been a good ball game. It's been an old school ball game. I like old school ball games. I'm old, okay? Both teams mostly running the ball and mixing in the pass. Stevens. 12 of 19, 161 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. Mount Chris without much time to work with. Lee takes it back at the four yard line. Finds a little bit of an opening, balls on the turf. Looks like the Mustangs are on it at the 30-yard line. It's Mountain Crest football. Mountain Crest football, the Mustangs need to go 70 yards. They've got 27 seconds to do it. They've got a dynamic athlete at quarterback in Preston Lofthouse. As Valentine is going to limp off. And now he goes down. goes down at the, on the far hash. It's a cramp. He got his leg up there and they're pushing on the toe. So that gives both teams a little bit more time to talk about it. Mountain Crest offense, not really a quick strike offense. But Lofthouse is a dynamic athlete. And if he gets loose in the open field, anything could happen, but there's only 27 seconds left in this ball game. Mountain Crest with two timeouts. Reminder that the ball, after a first down, the ball there, the clock is stopped. This ball is ready for play. Then the clock starts again after first down yardage. Next week, we're at Ridgeline. Our first chance to see the number one ranked team in 4A, the River Hawks play this same Mountain Crest team, the Battle of the Brothers. Here we go. See if Mountain Crest has a miracle in him. Lofthouse looking to the sideline, throws it wide and incomplete. We'll be back here at Green Canyon on the 1st of October as the Logan Grizzlies take on the Wolves. 28-10, Ridgeline leads Skyview late in that ballgame. Logan's come back to take the lead in the fourth quarter against Bear River, 32-28. Well, it's not too late in that Ridgeline-Skyview game. There's still time in that one. That score was late in the third quarter, so there's still time in that game. It's going on out in Smithfield. 22 seconds left. Second and 10 and a flag. The back judge throws the flag. Mountcrest took too much time. We've seen that call a couple of times tonight against Mountain Crest. And they had to take a timeout earlier to avoid one. 40 yards worth of penalties, six of them on Mountain Crest. 
So now they have to go 75 yards in 22 seconds. Lofthouse sneaks out. Stays behind the line of scrimmage and unloads one. Going to leave it short, and Fife is going to pick it off. With 13 seconds left, Fife picks it off. And that'll do it. Lofthouse got out of trouble. Looked like he might run. He had a lot of room in front of him, and instead he threw it off the back foot, and he couldn't get enough on it because he couldn't really step in. And he hung it up there in Fife. Grabbed the INT and sealed the win. And Green Canyon is going to move to 5-1 and one on the season. Their only blemish coming against number one ranked Ridgeline. Unsportsmanlike conduct on, on Green Canyon. So it's Green Canyon's ball, and it'll back it up to about the... What, 14, 15 yard line, let's see. Now the 13. And Green Canyon getting in the victory formation. No, they got... They, they have the, the pistol victory formation. And homecoming's going to be a happy one for the Wolves as they get a late touchdown. The third touchdown pass of the night for Jack Stevens to Fife, and then Fife with the interception to seal it. And Green Canyon with the win, 21-14. We hope you enjoyed it. Join us next week for Mountain Crest and Ridgeline Tangle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Valley Channel. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station, for over 30 years. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Wendy's is saying thanks for making the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger America's number one bacon cheeseburger by giving you more of what you love. Introducing Wendy's Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Double the beef, double the bacon, and now it comes in a giant meal for $5 with nuggets, fries, and a drink. There's absolutely nothing junior about it except the price. Get Wendy's $5 Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger meal before it's gone.